So Greg, thank you very much for coming out. Good to see you. Good, thank you, thank you. And by the way, for those of you watching, uh, you may or may not know, uh, Greg here is, uh, it, it was, was, known to, is, it was known to me for many years as well, it, it, as well as knowing him as Greg Dykes, I knew him as Don Dupre, and Sir Dupre, and Lord <laughs> Dupre, and uh, Dupre anyway. Dupre. And, and, and the man who, whose most famous line in Ultima, starting with Ultima 2, was? Do you want to buy a duck? Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so you brought a duck. <laughs> it wasn't YOLO. <laughs> that was me. And in fact, uh, 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 you'll, you'll be pleased to know, and, and it's really funny, none of the fans have picked up on this uh, on their own. But in the little tiny snippet of gameplay that we have prototyped, uh, that we've shown in the <laughs> prototype, uh, we have a character offering to sell you a duck. Okay. <laughs> do you have the technology this time to actually make all the other stuff work? We do now. We can actually really? fulfill. That's yes, good. we can fulfill. Because I always ran out of food when I played the game. That was that's the whole reason I came up with that. I always ran out of food. So I thought, hey, a sustainable source would be great. Yes. Well, in fact, let me back up. Or if you're really desperate. <laughs> right. Exactly. So let me, let me back up, and I think we may have uh, described this a little bit with Yolo, but I um, think you did. But, uh, but, but, but yes, uh, you know, I, uh, with, in Ultima 1, the only person who had anything to say was YOLO. Right. With ho yo he hum I've got the key. <laughs> and then finally for the majorly advanced Ultima 2, I went to all of my SCA friends, right. like yourself, who became main character, and said, what do you want to say? Right. And you thought about it overnight, and this was your plan. Please describe what you requested of me the next the day. The idea was... I don't know why I came up with the duck, but then I thought the line was kind of funny because it was Groucho Marx line, you know, you want to buy a duck. And but I thought that it could have a practical sense that you could buy the duck, yep. have it, get eggs over time, so you could sustain your food source and you'd have a renewed source. Yeah. Because like I, I always like I'd be in the dungeon somewhere, lost, and I'd starve to death. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 all the time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I with an one, it was constant. Right. So anyway, or you could kill the duck and eat it, and you'd have like a bigger food blip from doing that. But uh, I realized that, you know, the technology at the time and, and, yeah. and skills and all, you know, well, I all fit in what your plan was. No, no, but what I thought was so funny about, the, the, about that but time such was... But a big thing and somebody just never die. Really kind of oh, yeah. Me. And, and, you know, because when I asked you what do you want to say, of course, I meant what do you want to say, not what do you right. want to do. Right. You thought about it overnight, brought back what do you want to do. I had a whole component like, for the game. Uh, I know, it would have been great, <laughs> except I didn't have the technology to fill it. And then, uh, yes, the duck jokes, uh, of course, took off from there. And, uh, you know, my favorite was, uh, from my perspective, of course, was the SCA event, the camping event, right. where we had bought some real ducks. Yes. Where we brought out a white picket fence, where we had built signs that we placed oh, all yes. oh, yeah, over yeah, the place. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Starting with your tent. Yes. Long to praise Duck Sales Inc. That's right. And then all these challenges. I woke up Saturday morning to that. That's correct. To the challenges. <laughs> yeah, so I remember you walking up, knocking your head. Uh, ha, ha. And oh, then, so what did you discover as you went around the campsite? Oh, y'all had duck stuff everywhere, and I don't remember it all that clearly, honestly. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had a pretty fun night the night before, as I remember. <laughs> we did, in fact. In fact, that fun night was not on was sort of on purpose because we needed you to not be conscious during our hammering in of fences and right. quack quack quacking of ducks that we were right. setting up all around your encampment. Apparently, I'd insulted everybody in camp <laughs> somehow. I'm not sure how, but they all wanted to challenge me to a duel because we put up some all over the whole camp that says that says something, oh, that's something right. like some braggart, not you know, yeah, but, you know, my usual braggart self, right? Yes, um, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But the size we put up said, you know, I, Don Dupre, me and my and glorious numbers. cadets. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's right. We, we, I, I claim that you know we are far superior to any other you know combatants in the kingdom. Right. And so you know, uh, if if you dare to say otherwise, come you know challenge me. Right. And so the rest of that day, people were walking up to you and <laughs> challenging you. Which you then passed on to us, so we all did it together. That's right. Yeah. So we, we, we all fought. But it, we it all was fought. good. It was fun. Good exercise. It was my head hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and this is probably not appropriate for this exactly, but uh, yesterday I think I got an uh, email from Tyvar, not oh, directly, yes, but, but from his, from his uh, Facebook page. Great. Uh, 34 years ago, yesterday was the first beginning of the White Scarf. Wow, fantastic. So, so there's a little factoid. A little factoid <laughs> for, uh, for the, the hardcore uh, players, exactly right. right. Uh, well, I notice, uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let me look over here on the, this, this wall we have behind us to see if okay. we've got the framing. So, uh, so yeah, so the, when the Hildebrandt brothers have painted this uh, you know, painting of, of uh, all of us and our uh, uh, you know, the avatar <laughs> and, and they're, 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 they're great companions. Now, I can tell this one's YOLO. That's obvious. Go. Yeah, that, that would be uh, obvious. I think, uh, let's see, uh, the, the, the man of honor, 
Uh, you know, it's probably this person right here. Uh, although it could be Valor, so I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, think, See, I, think, I think that's probably I think must be you. This, I think, that, that looks the most like you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this mustache. has to be Dupre. <laughs> you know, here he is, champion. Uh -huh. All right. Very good. Now I'm Steve Mariah and Katrina. Right. Uh, no, there's Katrina, and uh, that would be Yana. Oh yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I haven't seen her in ages. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, yeah, in fact, I have. A, I sent an email out to Yana. She's the, the of the eight companions. Uh, you know, of course, most of them live here in town. Right, she's <laughs> still in England, I think. Uh, I think so. So I sent a note off to her. So she's the farthest away. So we're going to see if we can't uh, uh, see if she would. Video conference uh, or something. Yeah, exactly. We're record. You get an iPhone or something and, and make a recording. But uh, uh, but for those of you who also don't know, uh, I think I mentioned this when we were talking about Yolo too. That all eight of those companions were all people here from Austin. Right. Even a lot of the other main characters that weren't those companions were uh, people we uh, our friends right. here from from Austin. Uh, and uh, uh, and so we've all done lots of kind of cool things together. We built all those haunted houses in Britannia Manor, which right. was you and I that kind of ran ran all of those. Right. Um, we uh, we used to do these big raft race right entrances all the time, and we I think we won every year we entered. I'm pretty sure maybe not the first year. I've gotten some honorable mention, but yes, we so, have, we so sir, somewhere. so in uh, and I'm going to ask you to you know brainstorm here in real time. So, uh, uh, so, so uh, first, you know, would you, would you, would you like to, would you, Greg Dykes, mm -hmm. uh, uh, would you, would you like to, to play a role in the new game? Uh, sure. All right. All right. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, you know, do you want to say one of my duck? Do you want to? Yeah, yeah, I, I give you all <laughs> to think about that. If you'd like. <laughs> But uh, uh, but in any case, uh, you know uh, uh, one of the things I know that uh, the players will would, would like to you know hear, hear from is that a you're still around, b the you know who knows if you come to town you actually might get a chance to bump a D, you never know when true you, uh, and such and and hopefully uh, you know maybe we'll we'll think of some the, the new role for you to play in the okay. new game. But, yeah. uh, we'll let you think about it overnight. So you okay. Know. And this time we'll try to actually implement the full plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try to make the plan more. Uh, Reasonable. <laughs> well, the yeah, computers have come a long way since right. 1983. And this is a PC game. It is okay. PC. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, so uh, yeah, we've written right into the right. You know, in fact, the, the audience we're really uh, uh, trying to serve most mm -hmm. is the core audience we've had that we uh, sadly sort of abandoned about 15 years ago. You know, post uh, EA. Right. Uh, I'm not sure you really abandoned them, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand they got left behind, but <laughs> indeed, exactly. <laughs> but uh, uh, but yeah, we're trying to create a game now that is a, a both a really highly story-driven game, like Ultima mm -hmm. One through Nine were. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I actually think Ultima's Four, Five, Six, and Seven, in which you played a key role. Name uh, and died. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, there was that. There was oh, that. Yeah, we, there was we, that incineration <laughs> thing. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> but it came back, right? <laughs> uh, we'd have to go look at. have to go look at the canon to, to read back exactly the details. But um, uh, but anyway, those were the best I think solo player ultimas, and uh, we're also trying to create a multiplayer mode that is very much like Ultima Online. It's actually <clears> a slightly different technology than the traditional interpretation of the word MMO. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're gonna have a solo player mode and a multiplayer MMO-like mode to try to really uh, provide uh, serve both those audiences. Right. As which, as, as a player, I, which I don't play much, but I would very much appreciate that because I don't always want to go play multiplayer. Right. I just assume kind of me and the computer and have fun and not worry about having to interact or chat or anything. Else. <laughs> and it turns out, you know, as uh, you know, it's funny because when you when you run one of these crowdsourcing campaigns, people mm -hmm. uh, are not shy. To uh, let you know what they think, right? And, uh, right. and and we have definitely heard the voice of uh, we you know people. There's a, a big contingent of people that really want to play uh, completely offline. Don't want to, you know, don't want people to come in and you know can't you know steal their stuff, or right. with their game, right. or modify their play space, or just not have Mess to bother. With, not yeah. have to bother with it. Yeah, yeah just not have to bother. Right. So uh, uh, even though we'd already planned even before we started the crowdfunding, we planned on having the game play uh, offline at times. Mm -hmm. um, We've we've now gone and uh, pushed that to where we're going to uh, commit to making it to where you can play offline full time. I mean, never okay. online. Uh, so uh, hopefully that. I think it's a good choice. Right. See how it plays out. Exactly. The funny part is, right. uh, and I think I've told you this before, but uh, remember Gen Con that we went to? Oh yeah. Remember, oh oh we yeah. To promote. That's right. Years and years. Oh, like almost four or five. I, really long way back. Yeah. How long ago that was? <laughs> anyway, but so I picked my 
SCA name as from my nephew, my oldest nephew, who's his hmm. middle name was Dupree actually, and I got modified a little bit to be Dupree. Oh. And and then uh, you know then that went along for all the years, and then went to Gen Con that one time, and you were speaking at I don't remember what event or thing it was. Anyway, you were speaking about Ultima and all, and went there and was introduced to a little baby whose middle name was Dupre. That's, That's two right. fans That's that right. you had. I remember that and, and 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 uh, the thing, they, they took a picture with me holding their baby, right. um, who was probably months old at most. And it's just I thought it was a very funny kind of full circle kind of a thing that I I pick a pin name from my nephew and then all of a sudden it gets given to a child because of my name in the game. Well, then we need to track down that child. That child will now be 15 or so. Something like that. So <laughs> please, 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 uh, community of, uh, of of players. Help us track down, and this was in Wisconsin. It was in Wisconsin, yeah. and uh, so they it was Madison, Wisconsin, local Gen Con. Uh, but they could have traveled from. Wisconsin. I'm not sure but, what yeah. year it was. How was it down was the, the child with the middle name Dupre? <laughs> that's a good challenge. You know, it is really funny. You know, you, I never, uh, at least I don't remember that story. That that's where you took your. Dupre that, that's from. the part you probably didn't know. And uh, uh, but you, but you probably do remember where I took my SCA name, no, SCA name Shemino, which is a little more embarrassing reason. For but those who don't know, you know, I have not only my Lord British character in the game, but I also have my SCA persona Shemino, who's one of the companions to the Avatar uh, as well. Uh, but the way I got mine is. I misread the label on the 10 speed bike shifters of my bicycle, which is Shimano as <laughs> Shimano. Didn't know you were being Japanese, did you? No, and, uh, and I used it as a DD character, a DD character name for many, many years, and right. then eventually became my uh, SCA name, too. So uh, I think it actually isn't particularly valid as a way to choose an SCA name. We don't always put a lot of thought into all the <laughs> ego names. <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> Yellow has. He put a lot of time and thought to his. This is yes. a poem. Actually. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's an archer and a poem. Yeah. Really? I couldn't coach you the poem. He'd have to do it. But, ah. uh, it's but you know, one of the things I think is most funny though about uh, about Yolo being here and us using his name. And his is actually pro a proper medieval name. <laughs> is uh, yes. But how are there a lot of people who don't pronounce it correctly, Chris? <laughs> Iolo. <laughs> As in the hardware. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, you got just some hardware, so I guess yeah, that kind of works out. Works. Either way. <laughs> Uh, that's a great story. So uh, uh, let's see. Any, any other stories of the deep past that you can think of? Oh, there's one more. There's one more story we need to talk about. And this isn't exactly a gaming story, but it's only gaming related in that you know our hobbies transition from the virtual worlds to the real worlds to fantasy play to construction of homes and Thanks. boats and things. You had a construction accident. No, oh, very many years ago. <laughs> can you, can it you tell us? It wasn't even actually at work. I was helping a friend out that uh, was making something, and I was trying to help him out. Tell and my thumb? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please tell your fans oh. the story of your thumb. <laughs> well, it's much better now. Um, <laughs> but not bad for laying on the ground, actually. Um, <laughs> but I was helping Jake, actually, uh, another friend of ours that helped with raft races and food houses. And I can't remember what he's even building. Something for his canoes, I think, because he's a big canoeing fanatic. Um, anyway, and we were cutting some plywood on my table saw in my shop. And I was there after hours because I had a bunch of work to do and just helping him out. And the plywood had a big bow in it, so I put the blade up really high on the table saw. And we pushed it through and cut the two pieces he needed. And there was a little shred of, of wood left there. And I was going to wipe it out of the way. And I just happened to go to wipe it out of the way as I reached down to turn off the table saw and literally Ping. put my hand right through the blade. And what happened? And my thumb came off. And, and where did it go? Went. I'm not sure because <laughs> Jake heard me say something I can't repeat here <clears throat> really loudly. I felt I felt my uh, heel of my hand get cut, but I didn't feel that at all. But anyway, so I looked at my hand, said something really loud and vulgar, and and, and, had no, and had, had no thumb. It had no thumb. Just it was like and bloody stump. Was, was there really, really no? Plastic it wasn't Monty Python. It was okay. okay. It was. It was. I mean, it really, really didn't. Gun. It really didn't do that thing. But uh, anyway, and so Jake came over and <laughs> said, "I looked." He looked at it and he was shocked and he like took his started taking his T-shirt off to use and said, "Now nah, I'm gonna go with some uh, paper towels." 
find my thumb. <laughs> so he had to look for my thumb while I went off and got something to, you know, put a bandage on it. And then we drove very slowly down to Seton Southwest. Where and then as I remember, they didn't like run you into the emergency room instantaneously. Well, they did. They just didn't have a doctor for me, so they couldn't give me any painkillers. And they and, and, and they didn't have a neurosurgeon on on right there at the time either. They had to bring some on call. In. They, they had a plastic a plastic surgeon, uh, Deidre Rhodes. Actually, she was she was really good. <laughs> as, as, as this demonstration, it was like an eight-hour surgery, and she tried to get somebody else to come in to help, but um, they couldn't bring anybody else in. But we called a couple other doctors that. Uh, Jake's employer at the time were suggesting some good doctors, but they've been like off to a party. I don't want them to come. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they weren't really fit for uh, surgery. Surgery. For she, neurosurgery. So finally, she came in, um, and actually, before they had her, uh, I guess, signed up to do it, she was on her way. At that point, they could finally administer, um, I can't remember, they had an IV running, so I had fluids, but they couldn't give me any painkillers. It was getting, it, at first, it didn't hurt, but it was getting more and more. It was like a really hard ache. And it was you would think it worse and worse. And you I've been sitting around that. for like maybe an hour at this point. So, so and so they, they I remember them taking the shot and sticking it in the IV and I can't remember what it was, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, I could feel the coldness of it going through my veins to my heart and as soon as I hit my heart, it was like a boom. And there's like this wave of relief went through my body. It was it was really kind of an out of world experience. And so how long were you and your thumb separated? Um about an hour or so. Uh, no, no, I mean separated as in not stitched on. I mean about an hour or so. You got that back on an hour, an hour after it got off? Oh, well, it was an eight hour surgery, but, uh, but I mean, they started it was, it was, it was sitting separately for about only an hour. Uh, Actually, well, that's great. Uh, probably a couple of hours. I think yeah. you have like three to six <laughs> before it starts to rot. Right. And it's funny too, because she came in and she said, do you smoke? And at the time I did. And so I said, yes. And she said, well, okay, now, uh, now while this is healing, you're not smoking anymore, and no caffeine. Those things inhibit the healing of your hand, and, uh, and you'll be in the hospital about three days. Uh, three days, because I was up to here and work, and you know, and I, and I thought I thought, I thought, I thought I'd be, off, I, I thought I'd be going home the next day, you know, the working next morning. Well, I'm not sure about working, but I thought I'd be bandaged up and going. And she said, she said, or we can just like you know sew a flap over and you can go home tonight. I said, I'll hang around. <laughs> I thought she had a great bedside manner the way she handled that. Oh, uh, very good. But, very good. but it's all turned out pretty well. It's right about eighty-five percent of what it would be. Yeah. So, and as I remember, uh, uh, you and I, uh, and, uh, I think Jake also, we were just uh, had gotten our hang glider licenses mm. just before that. That was sort of the end of our hang gliding careers. I could do, by that time I healed up. I didn't get back into hang gliding. Yeah, right. nor did I. You were sort of my buddy going on hang gliding. So I was into my hang gliding as well. Right, Tom. Yeah, I, what well, are we thinking? <laughs> well, kind of put me out of commission for like you know six, eight weeks or something. So yeah. anyway, anyway, mo miracle of modern science. So uh, yeah. so by the way, if they can sew your thumb back on, we can bring you back to life. There you go. And you get magic. Right. Exactly. So we'll work it out. <laughs> okay. So, hey, thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed meeting Mr. Dupre, Don Dupre, Lord Dupre, <laughs> Sir Dupre. Uh, we will find a, a, a way to uh, reincarnate him in some way. Okay. Uh, into the new games. Okay.